Sales success, making the right choices. That is the topic of this edition of the Customer Edge, sponsored by SAP. I'm your co-host, Butch Stearns of the Pulse Network. My co-host for this episode is Shalini Mita of SAP. We just watched a video about the impact of social media on selling. So let me, the direct question to you, Shalini, how has social media affected the way you or your team sell? Well, it's one of the choices that you make, right? Is when you're going to interact or engage with someone, know everything about them, like Barry Trailer said. It's really important to know your audience and know your customer. In fact, did some research on you when uh, before we uh -oh. met. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I know that you're a Red Sox fan. Bruce Springsteen is one of your favorite singers, <laughs> and you love Tom Brady. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's really, it's really about knowing your customer. Okay. And I think social is a great vehicle to do that. Um, again, our, our million dollar deal is going to be closed via Twitter, uh, be, via tweet. I don't know, still to be, to be seen. But I think it can be used to leverage and really engage with your customers and to promote good branding. Yeah, and relationships are going to be built in the customer's journey. You have an opportunity for multiple touch points to strengthen the relationship, your trust, to even start one and build one. And so by the time it comes to find out when that person is sales ready, you'll have a much better ability to know that, won't you? Exactly. And there's an expectation these days that you do need to know who you're talking to. Right. Right. And, and, and customers demand that. And so I think it's social okay. becomes important. Well, thank goodness you only went that <laughs> deep in researching about me because I don't want the skeletons to come out. Speaking of people we know or people that you know, yes. uh, you have a long-term relationship with this person who is a sales professional and continuing with the sales management perspective in this episode of The Customer Edge sales success, making the right choices. We now bring in Rajiv Mishra. He is the Vice President, North American Commercial Sales and Marketing at Epson America. Rajiv, welcome to the Custom Reg. We're really glad to have you on this episode. Hey guys, good to see you all. Hi Rajiv. How Hi, is Sean. sunny California? California is great, nice and sunny and uh, maybe a little too warm out here right now. <laughs> great, well thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, you provide a wealth of knowledge when it comes to talking about choices that sales management needs to bring to their team to really engage with that empowered customer. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your role, um, what business unit do you run? Sure. Uh, so I'm responsible for a number of Epson's commercial businesses, our projector division, our point of sale hardware division, and then our wearable technology group. So a wide wide variety of products, uh, primarily B2B products. Great. And, well, uh, I wish we had more time to talk about the wearables because I'm really curious as to the wearable market and where that's going today. But um, I know you wanted to talk about the projection systems. So, you know, tell us a little bit about what is um, Epson's go-to-market strategy? You know, how has it evolved over the last five years? Sure. So uh, in the projector business, we are the dominant, uh, dominant player out there. And our main focus over the last five years has really been to penetrate some key markets, small and medium business, education, home entertainment, uh, and house of worship. And we've been really focusing over the next five years, how do we crack corporate in a deeper and a more profound way? And uh, if you look at how we've gone to market the last five years, it's been very partner led. We've got AV integrators and installers all around the country that have really been the trusted advisors to our customers, where they get pulled in really early in the process. And they're informing you know, the, on the various technologies and products that are out there. They're educating. They've been providing you know, evaluation units. They've talked about how do we go and install and integrate. And ultimately, they service and support. And we've really grown our business uh, thanks to these great partners that have been with that customer from the very beginning all the way to the very end. But as we look forward and uh, as we think about that enterprise customer, we're finding that their behavior is very different. They know a lot more than they did five years ago. And they bring in that AV uh, specialist far later in the process and far later in the journey than we are accustomed to. Right, so Raj they Rajiv, they've done, I mean, they've done all their homework, they've talked to other companies, they are coming to you probably already when they're close to, to buying. Absolutely, we believe 
60 to 70 percent of the decision has already been made before they even pick the pick up the phone and uh, call their var that's so they're incredible. far more educated today than they were five years ago. Great. So, you know, they're educated. How do you now engage with that new empowered customer? What choices are you making in management to help drive your organization to be better informed and to engage early on in the process before they're making their buying decisions? Well, first of all, sales and marketing today at Epson is working in a very different way than, than they did five years ago. In the past, the marketing guys focused on getting the product roadmaps right, launching the product, getting the pricing, putting together the collateral sheets, and really throwing them over the wall to the sales team. And sales would go run with that information and work through the partners and uh, sell product. Fast forward five years, the partnership between sales and marketing is intertwined. And in fact, I tell my marketing guys, their job is not just to market their product, but it's to enable the sales team to be successful uh, selling to their customers. And as a result of that, we've got to understand that end customer far better, far deeper than we ever have had to before. Let me jump in and ask you a question. What are some of the choices that you need to make to do this, to get marketing and sales continuously integrated as opposed to them being on islands. It's something we live here at the Pulse I know every day, but what are some of the choices that sales managers can make to help that foster that? Well, what we've done here at Epson is we have brought in the sales managers and the marketing managers together, and we've started to educate them about these customers, where they are when a partner ultimately uh, connects with them, and our sales teams are starting to realize, whoa, that customer is way down the funnel before we're even getting engaged. And they're asking the marketing guys, what can you do to help us to connect with that customer early on? And as such, you know, the marketing folks are doing a lot of research on the customer, trying to get in their heads way early in the process before the product is even launched. It's, it's true, right? We, we do. We need to get into their customers' heads. In fact, we need to get in there and plant seeds and guide them, right? And it sounds like you guys are, do, are, are doing the right thing to really try to engage with those customers before they're making their buying decisions. Absolutely. And before we even engage, we have to internalize them. And we have to understand, you know, they're not just the company they work for, but the vertical market they're in what's going on in that vertical market from an industry dynamic perspective? What are the priorities of these businesses? You know, if you ask a CEO or a CFO what's keeping them up at night, what are they thinking about? And then translating that down to, you know, the pain points. And ultimately, you know, we're working towards how do you profile these different type of buyers so that when the sales teams or the partners go in, they really have a good sense of who they're talking to. Far sense. more research uh, early on than we, you know, we've done in the past. So, you know, knowing that now you need to visualize the customer and you need to know who that customer is and what they want, what are you putting in place? What choices are you making um, with tools or activities or processes that's helping leverage and give you that stronger view of the business and the customer? Now, great question. We've uh, recognized that the marketing toolbox that we've used needs to get a lot bigger. And there are many more tools and vehicles that can be used to connect with this customer through their journey. So given that, we have been focusing on making sure that the sales and marketing teams understand the different stages of the customer journey, whether it's building awareness, educating, or driving to purchase, and we work to put ourselves in the shoes of that customer and say, okay, if I'm, you know, customer X and I'm looking for a projector for my conference room, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What am I going to search for on Google? And we try to map that and start, you know, developing content that will engage with them no matter where they are in that process. And what we found is you got to have a content factory these days. You've got to be thinking about developing all sorts of content, 
You know, it's not just the advertising or the videos, but it's the slideshows that are on SlideShare. It's the webcasts that are building awareness for your product. It's the testimonials or the case studies or the white papers. But the marketing teams have got to enable the sales teams by creating more air cover and hitting that customer, you know, regardless of where they are in the process. Right, and, and you find that you, know, you have a process in place, but you always have to be um, altering your course that you're, or the journey that you're going on because the engagement with the customer might, might change, right? And things evolve and how you deal with customers change. So how are you doing that? So what we're doing there is we are spending a lot more time understanding those interactions that the partners are having with the customers or our sales folks. And in real time, you know, I call it, we're course correcting. We're finding what tools are working, what are generating more leads, what aren't. Let's shift the mix in real time, put more energy behind what's working. What conversations are working between our sales folks and our customers? And if there's certain conversations that are working, let's make sure every sales rep knows what those best practices are. So it's continuous refinement and adjustment through the whole process. You can't stand still. You gotta keep moving in real time. I hear you. I mean, it's just the way of the world, right? Things are constantly evolving um, as more information's out there. So what's next for, what's next for you at Epson? What, where do you see um, your next level of engagement going? What are some things you're working on? So uh, I would say around the projector business, we are really focused on addressing the needs for collaboration, just like we're doing today over Skype. And given that uh, you know, it's, a, it's a big market, there's a lot of verticals, we're really getting the sales and marketing teams to tighten up how we go to market and you know, deliver some really exciting product solutions uh, around collaboration to enterprise. And you know, we're going through training. We've got to relearn everything we've learned thus far around marketing and sales, and we've got to transform the organization to be better. And then we're looking at different markets. Uh, for example, with my wearables group, we've got these really cool head mount displays, uh, similar to Google Glass. And we're finding interesting opportunities in the B2B space. So we've got to go understand that customer and figure out how to insert ourselves in that conversation and uh, grow the business. It's a really exciting time. So Rajiv, one final question for me, if you will. So you've painted a great picture of what's going on inside Epson. You, you dominate the market, yet you're doing anything but standing still. You've brought in partners and you bring them at the right time as a trusted source to help you with this. You're, you're focusing on redefining the sales and marketing relationship and continually doing that, as Shalini said, in a pace of change that's ongoing, so you always have to be correcting and always doing that. How about the daily basis? What are some of the, as a takeaway, what are some of the choices that you need to do to, to affect all of this on a daily basis when you get into work every day or you and your team? One of the key choices we're making right now is continually educating the sales and marketing organizations about the new way of doing business. It's not one of those things where you bring in a guy and you have a seminar and you're done. It's continuous reinforcement. We've got to change old behavior and get a very large sales and marketing organization pointed in this new direction. And that takes a lot of reinforcement, a lot of support to get them there. I'd say uh, in addition to that, we are getting our sales management organization to move away from managing through a dashboard, which uh, you know is very typical. If you look at your revenues, you look at your activities, and you make decisions based on that. And given this new world of uh, selling, we're really training and pushing the sales team to go deeper and to leverage that qualitative insight that's out there in the market with the customers, bring that back in. And it's not just about dashboard management anymore. It's you got to listen and you got to hear and you got to adjust and make sure the organization uh, is following. But it's a transformation. Well, and it, Rajiv, thank you so much. I mean, everything you're saying is what we, we just talked about, about by the trends 
um, that we're seeing the, the struggles that customers are, uh, companies are having with engaging with their customer, and it sounds like at Epson, you guys have figured out um, the right approach and you're constantly evolving your process, which is key to any success, is key to sales success at any company. So thank you again for being on the show. Thank you, you guys take care. Rajiv Mishra from Epson, a great interview because he, he, we get some insight into the way Epson thinks and really right to the meat of the subject of this show, sales success, making the right choices. They're already successful. They they're at the top of the market, but, but they're not stopping. But exactly, you know what, what's, I think the key to continue to make them successful is they're not, they didn't just define a process and just stopping right there. They know that it's an evolving process and you constantly have to look at what you're doing to see if it matches what the market is doing. And I think, you know, they have the vision and insight in doing that today.